you know, will be light-hearted, and some of them, not many though, will be in jest. All right. I, I've got to admire these guys, their optimism, because I checked at the TAB, and their odds of winning this debate tonight were similar to Namibia winning the World Cup. Right? <laughs> The only team outside of Namibia, you guessed, uh, the, um, not the Matildas, the Australian rugby team. Anyway, uh, I've got a great team here, N uh, Andrew North, the erudite, intelligent, analytical, and maybe anal an an Andrew North. He's going to present some correct statistics which will manifestly demonstrate New Zealand's superiority in this craft. If the Aussies haven't thrown the towel and, and conceded at this stage, our cool hand Luke, aka DC, D Daniel Colson, the youngest ever man to hold this trophy at 22 wow. years. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Yeah. Yeah. about migration, immigration, trans-Tasman movements, the purpose and effect to further open the gap between the two national bodies about as wide as the Tasman Sea itself. <laughs> Appropriately, my dissertation is going to cover character, the makeup of the res of respective auctioneering fraternities, the integrity or the distinct lack of it on the side of the table, <laughs> and the chasm that, that between the respective intellects and communication still. Let's start by examining the history of auctioneering. Auctioneering first came alive in Babylon in 500 BC. Now, Babylon, they've taken it literally because when you hear an Australian auctioneer, that's <laughs> what <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> Auctioneering to auction off women as brides. I think it's the only way an Aussie male would ever get a decent woman. As well. The ancient Romans took it one further. They auctioned off spoils of war, and just like just like the ancient Romans, the belligerent, warmongering Australians have taken so by for so many of our sports, Pablo, Bafala, Splitting, Russell Crowe, just to name a few. But it's integrity that sets us apart. By the way, these guys are nicely turned out today. I met them earlier in the foyer and I said, gosh, you guys smell nice. What is it? They said, trim the chapel underarm. <laughs> <laughs> changing the rules that govern our craft. Changes to the, the vendor bid have been brought about by the heinous abuse right throughout Australia of that legal right, and that is directly attributable to the criminal DNA universal in all early settlers to Australia. <laughs> now, such is the fear that that abuse will resurface in Australia. They're limited to one and two vendor bids. No such restriction. Never was a problem with the integrity of the fraternity here. Paddles have abounded in this forum in the last uh, in the last couple of days. Well, the only paddles we've ever had was Sir Richard Hadley, the greatest fast bowler Australasia has ever, ever, ever produced. But, but for Australia, they're compulsory. I think there's two reasons that they're compulsory in most parts of Australia. One was to avoid the plague of phantom bidders, which has blighted the craft in Australia forever. And the second was just to make auctioneers, make it possible for the dim auctioneers to identify who was doing what. <laughs> now look, it's always seemed to me over my many years at this competition that Australian auctioneers must have started in the trade extremely young. Probably to have at least some idea once to, 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 of what to do once they've started to grow whiskers. And, you know, Casey, and, and the reason I say that is by the time they've reached the stage, most of them have grown out of their suits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sitting next, I'm sitting next to a delightful young man at my table tonight, Robbie Smith, he's from South Australia, called beautifully, beautifully yesterday, but he's a living example of an auctioneer growing out of his suits. To me, it was very clear that R.M. Williams were a sponsor. And I said to him tonight, I said to him tonight, Robbie, my advice is when you go home, get those boots to have a party and invite your pants down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also convinced that the, the main reason young Aussie blokes choose auctioneering is so they can have a long-legged, short-skirted pencil at their side. Now, there's two reasons to have these pencils at their sides. Auctioneers themselves, well, they've got no idea with the numbers, and we've seen that over the last couple of years. <laughs> 
And secondly, it's just pure, impure indulgence. <laughs> My final point is language. The use of the king's language, is much, which is much more widely spoken, more powerful, more compelling, more persuasive, more romantic and correct than strain. You will achieve, guys, listen, you will achieve much higher prices. You'll win many more competitions with phrases such as metaphysical metamorphosis than with Richie Ditch, Triffic, Sam Grover, cop, crop, Cockroach, Crow Eater, or whatever. <laughs> you see, we are students of etymology, semantics, and lexicology. And I said to Scott Kennedy Green tonight, do you know anything about lexicology? He said, I think it was a share I went to school with <laughs> at high school. Thank goodness I didn't ask the other two because they didn't get that far. <laughs> now, I'm going to resume my seat now. But I sincerely hope my noble opponents haven't thrown the towel in before Mrs. North and Colson have the chance to totally cement the negative case. Thank you. <laughs> We move on straight away because we are running out of time. And, uh, Mr. Connor Patton has been uh, keeping an eye on me saying, Come on, we're running out of time. Uh, our first rebuttal auctioneer from the Australian team, he won the Ostros in 2015. And uh, when I introduced him to my partner, who is also Asian, she said, she said, his mother must be disappointed in him. <laughs> and I said, why? Because he chose a career as an auctioneer. And she said, no, just take a look at the state of it. <laughs> <laughs> From Victoria, Harry Lee. <laughs> Respectful to everyone, which clearly uh, this table hasn't shown so far. But look, it's clearly a contentious uh, debate, and uh, maybe some will say a debate for the masses, maybe a mass debate. Um, and, and here are here we are, six grown men stroking our egos to say who's better and who's not. Um, but uh, let's just keep it down to the facts. First of all, folks, you would have got the on your table this. Uh, chart showing all the previous winners, so you don't need to look at the trophy. Look at the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight editions were won by Australians. Um, as Smith's chips would say, the original and the best, and clearly that maintains the right there. And if we look at the uh, last equivalent, say six years, one, two, three, four, five, six years, there's only been one New Zealand winner as well. So, um, so those are the numbers, I know uh, Scott didn't provide any emphasis on that, but it's just Okay, so we started it, we're finishing it off at the moment as well. You made some meeting with the pin sandwich there, but you relied on maybe a couple of standard auctioneers who clearly have, you know, done really well, respectfully. Like, I mean, I think we all admit that they've been amazing in their craft, but uh, I'll tell you what, some of them are older than probably the people on the face of the notes that you're carrying right now. <laughs> Um, but let's stick to the facts, okay. Uh, in Australia, oh, so why Australia? Oh, Australia auction is better. In Australia, there's a national clearance rate of 65%. Uh, there's a national clearance rate of 56% in New Zealand. Now, yes, that sometimes to do with the listing agent, yes, yes. But who coaches the listing agents? Who trains the listing agents? This isn't us, the auctioneers. Uh, helping the listing agents to become better listing agents, conditioning the vendor, making sure they're priced right to get them sold. So we do more auctions in quantity and we have a higher clearance rate. So what does that represent? It's not luck, it's actually skill and proof that we do do more and better. Then, like I said, I'm going to keep it short, so stick to the facts. Today, there were five performers and only two got the best price. Oh. You. Yeah. 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 Australia and New I'll leave it at that, thank you.
<laughs> well, we won't go down that track. Um, to reply from New Zealand, he's won the Ostros twice in 2014 and again in 2018. Auctioneer and avid tennis player Andrew North. Yay! Never trust a tennis player. To them, love mean, means nothing. Andrew, you've got three minutes. What about 2.45? Nothing! I didn't speak after Jason to be fair, but uh, I knew there was a strong chance of him speaking after Harry and, and uh, no surprises that he was coming out talking numbers and stats and all that sort of stuff. And the stats are interesting because, you know, like Australians, they can tend to lie. This, <laughs> this very competition though, and it's already been mentioned, broached, it really is the yardstick, the benchmark, and de does deal so deliciously uh, with the issue at, at, at hand. And there have been various numbers quoted. I'd like to talk about some numbers of, of, of our own. And, and it is interesting, and what hasn't been touched on is that as it stands, Australia, well, Scott started to touch on it, as it stands, Australia, if every state does indeed meet their uh, quota, are allowed a total of 16 entries. That is a fact. That is still a fact. New Zealand is allowed two. That is also a fact. This gives Australia technically a 16 out of 18 spots <laughs> in every competition. That is a fact. We're better put an 89% chance of winning each time. Fact. And I hear you, New Zealand, two entries out of 18. It's more than fair uh, when competing against Australians. And, and, and <laughs> that you are wrong, but Australian, <laughs> Australia does have the statistical advantage. Harry, I'm sure, will confirm that late, later. And, and if we were arguing the view that Australians should be better auctioneers, of course we'd be in trouble, so based, on the, based on the numbers. Since the competition became serious, or as Scott referred to it, the modern era, uh, in 2005 it became annualised. Uh, New Zealand have won, with only 11% chance, mind you, uh, 8 of the 16 titles. That's 50% of the time, with, as I said, only 11% uh, chance. Harry, Harry Lee, again, I refer to him as the best statistician in the room. And ask him later, uh, because he'll probably want to comment on the remoteness of odds like that ever happening. Similar odds might be offered on seeing Mark, Mark Summit smile when calling an auction. <laughs> and it's interesting, yes, even with no smile, or ability to smile. He was able to beat the Australians on not one but three occasions. If we were a state in Australia, as Australia would like us to be, we would be the most successful Australian state, winning eight times, the mighty state of Victoria managing only six. Uh, New Zealand, as being talked about, has the youngest ever winner, Mr Coulson. Fact. New Zealand has the best looking ever winner, uh, who just happens to be the eldest ever winner, Team Captain McGoldrick. <laughs> Zealand, uh, in fact, the last time New Zealand didn't have uh, a New Zealand in the finals was when uh, we made the mistake of sending an Australian to represent us. Ah. <laughs> oh, that is... I'm just, I'm just dealing with the facts. <laughs> and, and perhaps my, 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 my most favourite uh, statistic, and again Scott talked about the postmodern era, is the first two Australasian winners in 1993 and 1995. Well, there were no New Zealanders in the competition. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, that is an Australian title. <laughs> Great to see both entries from the state of New Zealand in the final. And I'm sure tonight the stats, again, once we're proven our New Zealand favour. I mean, it's great. We've heard some great uh, jokes, some gags, some dad, uh, dad jokes, one-liners over the last two days. But yeah, I guess none more funny than the suggestion that Australian auctioneers are superior to New Zealand. <laughs> Those ladies and gentlemen are the facts. Good evening. <laughs> competitor before we will invite the team captains up for a second rebuttal. Uh, from, uh, this auctioneer comes to us from Queensland, uh, from a family too poor to even afford a surname.
<laughs> so, oh, I, I, was, I was actually too busy uh, over there counting my frequent fly points from the years when I used to fly over here to call auctions for <laughs> Robert Ponsonby because uh, they required it. An Australian auctioneer. Uh, sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, neither here nor there. Uh, that's okay. Uh, a thinly veiled argument, Andrew. Very much like your hair, but anyway. <laughs> this argument reminds me of the argument between the shampoo and the conditioner in your shower. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> no, uh, honestly, it, it's a pleasure. Um, I was only saying to my partner earlier on, uh, the two auctioneers uh, who I, I admire the most, uh, Phil McGoldrick and uh, Andrew North. Uh, Phil McGoldrick, the most eloquent, uh, and he uh, certainly demonstrated that again here tonight. Uh, the most nauseatingly likeable person was the way I described you, Andrew, so well done. <laughs> and we're soon to find out uh, why they call him 007 uh, amongst uh, our group as well. Um, I will thank Scott Kennedy Green for his leadership. It's been uh, incredible. The uh, first time that we have met has actually been on stage uh, to uh, discuss, so that, that's been excellent. But here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that we have the wrong argument. I think we have the wrong argument tonight. I think the argument is not whether or not we have the best auctioneers in Australia. I think we're forgetting who the customer is. Who is the customer? Is the customer, if I ask, each and every single person with inside this room, many of whom are auctioneers, the vast majority of us would answer it, that the customer is the vendor, the customer is the business owner, or the customer is the agent. And so, let's focus on that. Let's ask those people who are the best. Interestingly enough, if you went along to an auction this weekend as a potential vendor, and if you saw an agent pass in a property, no bids received, that was a former Australasian auctioneering champion, up against someone who has 10 registered bidders and sells $100,000 above reserve, my question to you is who would be the vendor's choice? And there's a high degree of likelihood it is not the person who in these competitions is the most capable, it is the person who represents the agent who was the best, not necessarily the auctioneer. So we've been looking at the wrong data set. Let's Fat chest. No, 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 I've still got time. Let's fat chest. <laughs> As to who is the best agent. Or who has the best agents. Not who has the best auctioneers. So Daniel, I searched Pulse, which is our internal data set, and I found that for the last financial year, which in Australia is July through June, God knows what you do here, but it is three out of ten New Zealand officers are in the top 10. Some amazing officers in there, by the way. Three out of 15 of our top businesses, top businesses being multiple office owners, are from New Zealand. And then one out of our top 10 agents are from New Zealand. Interesting data set, given that we have 36% market share in New Zealand and 37% market share in terms of just, you know, a bit right wide there, but anyway, um, <laughs> in terms of auctions. But are we arguing the right thing? And when we look at the data very clearly, Australia has the best agents and the best business owners conducting the most amount of auctions, so therefore our auctioneers are getting more reps, and because they are getting more reps, we are represented on this trophy more, and therefore your conversation is done and dusted. Thank you, Phil McGoldrick, for your <laughs> earlier statements. Andrew, I look forward to hearing your closing remarks too, Daniel, but quite clearly, we have the better agents, and so therefore, we have the better auctions. Thank you, Jason. Ironically, I first of all met you was on the stage too. Um, our another, finally from the New Zealand team, our third competitor from the New Zealand team, uh, from the negative team, uh, is, is a negative in the moot. Uh, another double winner in both 20, uh, 2012 and 2013 and the youngest ever to win the Ostros. In fact, so young that the last time that Australia held the Bledisloe Cup, he was only four years old. <laughs> <laughs> a man
man who's boof on here once had his own Instagram page, Daniel Cobson. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Um, hello. Uh, for our uh, Australian rugby fans, um, Buller. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am proud uh, tonight to be part of uh, the most talked about debate of the week. Connor referenced it earlier. I was in the Uber on the way here, and the Uber driver said to me, he said, he said are, you, are, you, are you watching the debate tonight? And I said, I said, I'm actually in it. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe that even the Uber driver had heard about uh, the moot of tonight's debate. There are a number of immediately obvious factors um, as to why Australian auctioneers are not better than Kiwis. And why you'd expect a Kiwi auctioneer to be better than an Australian. And it's not just the fact that we wear socks when we call auctions. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's much different than that. <laughs> and I don't intend tonight to go down the path of Scott Kennedy Green, which is, if you can't convince them, confuse them. Because <laughs> he did a bloody good job at that. <laughs> If you haven't seen over the past two days, New Zealand auctioneers are laser focused in their craft on the task at hand, where Australian auctioneers can't even count to ten without talking about sets. <laughs> <laughs> and for time immemorial, uh, for the Australians in the room, that means a long time, <laughs> Australian auctioneers have come to New Zealand to get better. But it is impossible to name one New Zealand auctioneer who has gone to Australia to improve. <laughs> the likes of Ken Benoom, David Clifton, John Abbott, all names that we know, John Bowring, Robert Tolp, they came from Australia, overweight and ordinary. Look at them now! Today they are both in peak physical condition. <laughs> and not too bad at auctioneering either. <laughs> Even Australia's most <clears throat> crowned winner, Justin Nicholson, in his lead up to his trilogy of wins, spent more time in New Zealand than he did in Australia. <laughs> so I think actually while our count is eight, we could probably call it 11. <laughs> And the uncomfortable truth is, and this was referenced before by Mr McGoldrick, is that it's not exclusive to auctioneering. We talk about Russell Crowe and Farlap, the flat white, and Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is that every great Australian is actually a Kiwi. <laughs> and you might wonder, what qualifies me for such an informed view? And that is, of course, my place of birth in Subiaco. And even back then in the 1990s, my parents took a look around and they saw the dearth of auctioneering quality in Australia. <laughs> and they thought, there is no way we're going to bring up a future Australasian winner on this side of the Tasman. <laughs> Jason, uh, you referenced calling auctions for Ray White Ponsonby. Um, a few years ago. Unfortunately, all of the Kiwi auctioneers were already in demand. Um, and they had, to, they had to find an alternative. And Jason spent his time calling auctions for Ray White Ponsonby. And, uh, and that was, uh, I think, Jason, one of the main contributing factors to your win at the Australasian. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of the negative team, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> their uh, cards. We have one last, of course, the second rebuttal uh, in, a, in a debate. And of course, to do the first uh, brief right, right of rebuttal, I call upon our illustrious Australian uh, team captain, Scott Kennedy Green. Have a go with that one. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Please God, I believe it.
age, I think. Still doesn't smile. No time for smiling. You're a smile. I was a check, a double check. Oh. Yeah, thank you. I can see people. Take credit, Oh, you have a bit one? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 The moment I heard that again, go and sing it out. How long does it take to add up two columns of numbers? It's a Kiwi. Kiwi add up. Give it to an auctioneer. In space. So you know the answer? Is it good news or bad news, John? May I? It's John again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a result. We have a trophy. Uh, Connor, I'd like you. The con this trophy gets presented <laughs> to the winner of the debate tonight. <laughs> and the winner of tonight's debate is. <laughs> <laughs> Team Australia! Oh!